Mm -hmm. And it came out that during the four years that Trump was president, the leader of the IRS was a Democrat. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start scratching and clawing and asking questions about why he wasn't audited, go talk to your boy. Because (laughs) he could have easily green lighted it. (laughs) Right. And audit on him. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. We give you facts, we give you fun, and we give you real talk. This is the most fun that you will have this week on a political podcast. (laughs) And the podcast queen, reigning champion, still on the throne, is the amazing (laughs) Inger. Inger, Uh what's going on? (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, It's been, I hope you took a break from politics during the holiday season, enjoyed the time with your family and friends and just kind of got away from it and did other things besides politics. Because as you know, politics always goes on 365. So, you know, you can get away from it. It'll still be there when you come back. So um, hope everybody had a good holiday. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I am Elmo the Conservative. We are Brutally Honest Talk Radio and uh, I'm ready to jump in. You got anything you want to you want to say before we shift in overdrive? No, let's just go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about, I was going to talk about first, this bizarre thing that happened in Times Square in New York with some madman who attacked some police officers with a machete. Okay. We're going to come back to that. That was New Year's Eve. But since then, as a matter of fact, as recently as last night, a football player on the Buffalo Bills got injured and he mm-hmm. is now in critical condition. It is uh, DeMar Hamlin is his name. And uh, I try to get one of the most recent updates that I could find. This says uh, one hour ago saying Hamlin's uncle described a football player in the hospital room. And mm-hmm. this, this is what he had to say is that he's flipped over on his stomach uh, to help with the blood on his lungs Doctor mm-hmm. said uh, on his stomach to help take the pressure off the lungs so they won't have to work as hard. And next step is to get a Hamlin who's still sedated on a ventilator to breathe on his own. Uh, good news is he's still alive. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really watch football. I just mm-hmm. happen to be in a room. My son turned on a game. Cincinnati Bengals and the Bills were playing. This was right at the beginning. Like the Bengals scored a a touchdown and then inside of five minutes, I didn't see it when it happened, but I saw the replay, you know, right after I was Mm -hmm. focused on something else on the field. So Mm -hmm. basically the way it happened was Hamlin was helping to tackle this guy on Cincinnati and the guy like ran into, he like caught him in the middle of his chest. Um, I don't think it was with a helmet or maybe been with a shoulder, but Mm -hmm. you know, he, he, you know, you ran into him, he grabbed him and it was two or three other guys tackling him too. And then they all fell down and bounced. And then Hamlin just sprung right up. And then like three seconds later, he put his, his arms out like this and then fell straight back, stiff as a board and the back of his head just hit the ground, bam. Oh, and, and he was, he was out. When somebody has to get CPR, like, you know, mouth to mouth resuscitation yeah. and the, the pressing down on the chest, that's to get the heart beating again. Yes. Yeah. Or for the lungs to breathe, you know, people are breathing, trying to breathe air and oxygen to your lungs. Yes. So yes. either one of those is critical. You can't go without breathing or go without your heart beating for very long. Absolutely. And the Absolutely. two work together. If one stops, the other one is going to be shortly behind it. Absolutely. I've been seeing it um, on the friend's social media timelines and that sort of thing. And folks are coming up with all kinds of reasons for why it's happening. And from all the way from, you know, the vax to he has an underlying heart condition that they just found out about, all that sort of stuff. So in lieu of all of that, the best thing to do is one, pray for him to pray for his family because he's what, 24? I mean, he's, he's literally a kid. 24 and to have a heart attack at 24 
and to be playing in professional football at 24. So he must be really, really good. I mean, that's young and he's playing in professional, professional football. So um, the, the tag end of this is, you know, his career could possibly be over and he's only 24. So that's a lot for him to take in. That's a lot for, a, I know he's 24, but it's a lot for a kid. He's a kid compared to our ages. Yeah, sure. um, so it's, um, I hope they get to the bottom of it. I hope he's going to be okay with no brain damage and definitely no, no physical things to have to deal with later on in life. Right. So hopefully he's going to come out of this. And um, I'm glad he was able to get the care as fast as he was that he was on the field, but they were right out there to get to him. So that's right. all good news in terms of that. And really do hope that he turns out okay and that there are no long lasting um, disabilities because of this. I mean, cause he's getting 24, good Lord. He's young. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. a kid. <laughs> You know? Not a very big guy. Uh, he looked mm -hmm. like he may have been 180, 185, like built okay. like a, a wide receiver or a fast runner. Mm -hmm. And uh, 24 years old, drafted two years ago, 2021, wow. you know, relatively wow. new to the NFL. Mm -hmm. And his mother was at that game. Oh, good Lord. Oh, my gosh. I know so, her heart stopped, too. Once all that yeah. happened, her heart had to stop yeah. as well. I mean, that's, um, yeah, that's a lot. I've, I've never seen somebody get injured and both teams, I'm talking about like 50, 60 people come surround them. Everybody formed a circle and got down on their knees and started praying. There you go. And, and they put him not on a stretcher, they put him in an ambulance, like mm -hmm. the full size, the one that runs the red lights in traffic, a full size yeah. ambulance, put him in yeah. that and drove him off the field. Wow. Uh, grown men, macho men crying on both mm -hmm. teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they said they went in the locker rooms and they sent out a message soon after. We're not going to be able to play tonight. It's, it's, I, 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 and I think that's um, that was professional. That's the way it should be. It's just a game, period. Yeah. It's just the game. So, in, you know, that goes to show that they're class act, both teams and coaches, I assume, because I guess the coaches and the officials had to say, yes, it's OK to do this. So I think it was a class act all the way around. And um, it goes to show that they have perspective in this. You know, it's not all about the football and all that sort of stuff. So if any if anyone around his age hears this message, know that there are millions of young people that want to get into sports, mm -hmm. uh, football, basketball, or whatever it is. And football is one of those dangerous sports. Boxing is dangerous. People mm -hmm. have died in the ring and you, you want it. You have to understand what the risk is because mm -hmm. um, if anything unfortunate were to happen to him, nobody's going to get sued. I right. guarantee you. Right. I mean, even for injuries, they have you sign something or if you break your leg. Mm -hmm. So th they're going to, I mean, it's, it's unfortunately it's business and things will resume and keep going. And I hate to see that. I hate yeah. to see that happening, especially for those, those individual uh, ball clubs. P people are uh, worshiping and admiring these athletes so this is real. It's, it's colorful and pretty, and you got the theme music and all of that and the glamour and everything that comes with it. The, the physical and the danger is is real. It's a big it part of that. It's a big part of that job. And uh, you just just know if you if you want to get into a sport like this, or soccer, or uh, rugby, wrestling, boxing, boxing, whatever it is. Mm -hmm know that there that there are risks Absolutely. and uh to ask yourself how much how much do you want this or how much is it worth i don't know how much he was getting paid nfl play uh pays pretty well mm -hmm. but whether he's got a million dollars or 25 million dollars it is not helping him at all right now right right when it comes to that, yeah, with prayers, it's um he like I say he hears us and the answer is either yes, wait, or I have something better. So um, you know, those are his answers to us. And um so he he knows what's going on. And for the guy, you know, there's healing, there's perfect healing. He'll either be healed here on earth and he'll 
walk out and he'll be a testimony for others to help others, or he'll be healed in heaven. So either way, he's going to be healed. Mm-hmm. And he, even if he can't ever play again, if he could just be a regular person like me and not use any athleticism to make money, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> right. that, that's a W. That's, that's right. a W. <laughs> that's I'm going to wear these the colors in this city. And I'm going to cheer for this team. The article reads, uh, multiple New York Police Department officers stabbed with machete near Times Square. Officers were stabbed by a suspect wielding a machete just blocks away from New Year's, New Year's Eve celebration in Times Square. Incident occurred around 10 p.m. Uh, West 52nd Street. And the rookie officer who just graduated Friday from police oh, academy. Goodness. Oh, my goodness is expected to recover wow uh, according to the uh, the press conference he just he just started he hadn't been a cop he hadn't been you know feet on the ground for a week right suspect identified as 19 year old trevor bigford of maine according to the police department he was shot in the shoulder by a police officer after the stabbings and was transported to the hospital Um, And then this short uh, statement of quote, I want to be clear that the FBI through the Joint Terrorism Task Force is working very closely with NYPD to determine nature of this attack from uh, FBI's uh, Michael Driscoll uh, will run every lead to ground. I just want to be clear, as you've heard said tonight previously, this is very much an ongoing investigation. So our ability to talk about specifics is limited. Mm -hmm. But why I wanted to talk about this was uh, the mentality of this person. New Year's Eve is when you're going into a new year. You should be getting your goals together Mm -hmm. and what you want to do with your life. Mm -hmm. People are coming together for a celebration. And you know how cold it can get New Year's Eve in New York. Yeah. People are choosing to come out. They they want, I mean, this can this can happen at any time, any kind of a public event or gathering outside, they're Mm -hmm. they're wanting, they're believing in the good naturedness of people and believing that we can come together and celebrate without having to have security every 10 feet. Right. Right. Where people can, people can enjoy and have this celebration. So this dude approached uniformed police officers. He knew who they were. I would say he has a death wish. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Wanting to do that. You can't you can't be initiated into a gang if you don't walk away and you don't survive. You're right. Now, they say he got shot in the shoulder. I don't know if that was an accident. They were aiming for his chest. But that dude is lucky to be alive. He's very blessed to be alive. Yes. Especially yeah. with, with, with New York, New York uh, police officers. And, and he's like I say, he's blessed to be alive. And yeah. I think it was somewhere and maybe it was i think it was the same one um he wanted some to be tied with islam or islamic terrorists or something like that if that's the same one i'm thinking of but yeah i you know i don't with the crime wave and everything that's going on in new york city and the fact that is it's basically not safe um for folks to be up there with everything that's going on i mean you know I i don't know they say he might have a mental health condition he may um but at the same time, there is really no excuse or no reason for him to go up to police officers with a machete intentionally yeah. trying to hurt someone. I mean, it's just, it doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. So. And a machete, that's about halfway between a butcher knife and a samurai sword mm-hmm. about how long the, the blade is and the, the you know, the, the, the length of it and mm-hmm. very sharp. Um, another point that I was thinking of with this is this is not any kind of a firearm for the people that want to ban guns right now. He, he targeted police officers. Um, the target could have very well been women, children, people of a certain race. Mm -hmm. And when, when someone is bent on destruction, there's, there's very little that you can do except be uh, be vigilant and keep your head on a swivel. Absolutely. And again, like and now you brought up a good point, talking about the um, gun bans that folks will have. Well, you know, that's a machete is now an assault weapon. So yeah. are you going to ban that? You know, 
it's, you can't just keep going on and banning, 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 and all you're doing is taking away um, the privileges and rights of regular people to be able to, to defend themselves in this case, or in any case. In this particular case, thank goodness the, the um, police officers had guns, so they could protect themselves and the other people that were in the area. So um, yeah, you, you can ban all you want to, but it's not going to keep the instrument of destruction or whatever it is out of the right. hands of criminals. Hence, that's why they call them criminals. So, you know, a gun ban is useless. And just trying to make that political when yeah. it, it has very it has very little to do with uh, controlling crime. It has very right. little to do with that. And I think, because uh, we, we live in uh, uh, suburbs of Atlanta, and there's a suburb here called Kennesaw. And I believe that in Kennesaw, it is the law that everyone owns a gun in their home. It is. Do you know that the, when, when they put that in place, <laughs> the crime in, in Kennesaw <laughs> dropped down like a skydiver? <clears throat> like a lead balloon. <laughs> lead it, it sends a message and letting criminals know that the women who live alone uh, men, old people, everybody's packing. <laughs> right. And there might not be a gun at every house, but good luck finding the houses that don't have the guns. Hey, <laughs> because you know, you want to you you spin that wheel and play Russian roulette? There you go. It's on you. <laughs> so that, I mean, look, look, that, that actually deterred crime, but you're, you're not going to hear Biden and the other people that are talking about that they're not going to bring that out. And then, exactly. Uh, exactly. you know, some people may have heard before, I just want to remind folks, uh, most, most of the people that do these mass murders, it is not an automatic weapon. It's a right. pistol, a semi-automatic. Most of them that, that do um, what, the, what the, the government or the police department or whoever determines what is a mass murder is for four or more people. You know, the thing in... Uh, what at the frat house, Idaho, where the yeah. people were stabbed yeah. in there, stabbed. Yeah. And no, no guns, no guns involved. Yeah. But, but because obviously it's something going on up here. Mm -hmm. yep. So it, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, the focus being on the wrong thing with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Recently, Donald Trump's tax returns were released. Mm -hmm. And people have been talking about that ever since he started running for president, similar to Obama saying, where's your birth certificate? You're not really a citizen, yeah. like, yeah. you know, the year of the election. Yeah. So <laughs> it, first of all, like, I think I think part of them were released because we're, we're talking about from uh, from 2016 to 2020. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of, you know, a lot of tax stuff. Yes. I mean, he's yes. he's got more paperwork involved in filing his taxes than I do because yeah, he's yeah. tied up in more in more things. So anyway, um, partially it was released for um, I don't know anybody to see, but definitely the FBI or whoever, whoever has authority, mm -hmm. you know, the IRS, you know, they audit him or whatever. And he's completely clean. There's no funny business, nothing wrong, nothing wrong going on. Mm -hmm. And it came out that during the four years that Trump was president, the leader of the IRS was a Democrat. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start scratching and clawing and asking questions about why he wasn't audited, go talk to your boy. Because right. <laughs> he could have easily green lighted it. <laughs> right. And audit on him. And when true. the IRS comes for you and, and they want to audit you, Nobody can stop you. I mean, look what, uh, you know, look when they, they raided Mar-a-Lago. Right, it's still right. government, even though it's the FBI, you know. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, if folks are more worried about, and again, Trump worked and he was president for four years and did not take a paycheck. First of all, he did this job. He volunteered for four years, first of all. Secondly, if they're more <laughs> worried about Trump's taxes than they are Nancy Pelosi's, Joe Biden's, Obama's. Oh Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, um, you know, let's keep going down the list. If you're more worried about Trump's taxes than those folks, then the problem is with you. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. it's with you. Who, why, how is it that a person can go in and make once $175,000 a year and then they come out and they're not just multi-million, I mean, there were $200 million, 
250 million dollars there were how is that possible for a public servant they so that's Pelosi? where the questions need to be asked that's look at your congressperson's tax return demand their tax returns and yeah. while you're doing it you're setting a precedent now so um you know so our tax returns are no longer private anymore what yeah. why is it right. important to see tax returns for some people but not others so if we're going to do this, let's do it for everybody. Everybody lay your tax returns on the table and let's go through it. Better yet, the, the bigger deal is why are there 76, 80, 76 to 80,000 pages of tax law that no one knows? That's, that's the problem. That's where the issue lies. You know, we have all these, we have thousands and thousands of pages of tax law and no one knows what's going on. But yet and still, if you don't pay, they're going to come after you. Yet and still, if somebody wants to see your tax returns because you're running for president and you ran for president, they're going to subpoena you and get your tax returns. It makes no sense. I had heard that uh, Pelosi was worth like 80 million from somebody, the speaker yeah. of the house that works in government. So yes. that is the biggest red flag, bigger than any American right. flag on Capitol Hill. Exactly. So nobody, nobody even questioned that. You know, nobody her, her at all. And, and, and her husband. I exactly. think he's the main one. I don't know. I mean, they're they're married, so they're, they're both, you know, profiting from whatever investments and all of that. Um, but I, I'm glad you you reminded me of something else I wanted to say. So when, when Trump was president, he did not take a paycheck. Right. He, uh, he had all of that uh, donated to charity. Mm hmm. So, which is, you know, we're talking about like $400,000. dollars mm -hmm. ever since Obama was the first one to get that salary, 400 grand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his taxes are clean, but he didn't earn any money. He didn't earn any right. money when he was president because the money that he received was through investments. Exactly. And exactly. they can't, they can't tax that. Right. Right. So I remember I remember when Obama was running and he was talking about raising the capital gains tax, which mm -hmm. is profit that you make from the stock market. Yes. I believe that's one yeah. of the main reasons why uh, when the stock market opened back up after the Obama election, the, the market plummeted. Mm -hmm. It plummeted down. And I believe that's why, because investors get scared when you talk yeah. about taxing their 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 profits from investments. Exactly. So. Exactly. And and again, you're taxing folks that are giving their money because we're all in the stock market, whether you have a pension, whether you have an yeah. investment account, a 401k, whatever it is, it's all in the stock market. Let's just get real. So what yeah. you're doing is you're giving your money to these companies. You're letting them use your money for research and development or whatever they need to use it for so they can mm -hmm. bring a profit back to you. So when you make money off of them doing what they're supposed to do and giving you a profit back, then the government says, no, nope, that's mine. So that's right. a problem. Again, and where's all this money going? Where does this money go? That's, it makes no sense. That's where, that's where we need to be um, certain about what's going on. Follow the money. Is it going to Ukraine? Is it going to, you know, folks' pockets? <laughs> Is it going to study gender in fish in Palestine, you know, where is it going? And that's what we need to get a handle on. And, they, and they've done that. You know, we're, we're spending money on a special oil to slick down the hair of otters right. or Indian fish and sea turtles. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's like, come on, people, come on. But yet and still, we're supposed to get all up in arms because of Trump's tax returns. And Trump, uh, I understand when you're when you're president, you can't get money from businesses or like the businesses that he had. He had to step away from them. Mm -hmm. You know, he obviously mm -hmm. he obviously still owns them, connected to them, but he he couldn't he couldn't have any any dealings with them. Right. So he's clean. He's not stupid. He's got the the mother of all law law teams, and he's right. not going to do anything that could you know, that could cause him to go to jail or have his, his money taken away. The penalties from the IRS are stiffer than whatever you pay in taxes. Mm -hmm. But and let me read this, uh, this last thing from this, this article here about Trump's taxes. This, this is them talking. This is what they said. 
The move comes over a week after the panel voted to release the former president's tax returns, announced that the Internal Revenue Service did not audit Trump in 2017 or 2018 when he was in office, something the IRS is required to do annually for the president and the vice president. Okay. Now, whose fault is that? That's it, IRS. <laughs> IRS. <laughs> You know, IRS, I arrest, I arrest you, you arrest, you arrest them, you arrest you. Okay. Okay, goodness.